So we left off talking about the painting and mosaics that were found in the houses of Pompeii and the neighboring cities that were buried by Mount Vesuvius. Um, and so the murals were done in the true fresco medium, which means that they were painted while the plaster of the wall was still drying and it made them super durable. Plus that on top of the deep ash that preserved them makes these mural paintings really well preserved. So it's a really cool look into the past um, that we can, you know, we can actually look into the past with these wall paintings. And we're going to take a look at them. And there's a classification system in place to describe Pompeian wall painting styles. So there are four different styles and we'll go over them in detail. So hopefully you can tell the difference between the four different painting styles. So the first painting style is pretty much the easiest one probably. It's just called the first style and its aim was really to imitate costly marble panels using painted stucco reliefs. So this slide shows a wall painting done in the first style and this is the fossus or entrance of an old mansion in the city of Heraclinium, a city that fell victim to Mount Vesuvius. And it's called the Salmonite House and it dates back to the late second century BCE. And it basically imitates the expensive marble that would have been imported from different parts of the Mediterranean. And this practice of using lesser materials to imitate expensive ones is not a uniquely Roman idea. It also was done in Greece as well, but it's an example of how Roman architecture was influenced by Hellenistic Greece, because I guess Hellenistic Greece um, used lesser materials to imitate more expensive ones as well. So it's an idea borrowed from Greece. So the second style never, or actually the first style never really went out of fashion. They continued to paint fake marble um, onto into their paintings, into their mural paintings. But the second style came along. Um, and in some ways it's the opposite of the first style. With the second style, painters sought to dissolve the room's confining walls and replace them with the illusion of an imaginary three-dimensional world. And this style did have precedence in Greece as well, but mo some do believe that it's a Roman invention. So this is the dynastic mystery frieze done in the second style from room five of the Villa of Mysteries in Pompeii, Italy, 60 to 50 BCE. It's a fresco and five feet, four inches high. So it is from the Roman house called the Villa of Mysteries. It was in Pompeii. Archaeologists believe this, archaeologists believe this room was used to celebrate the rites of the Greek wine god Dionysus and the Roman equivalent is Bacchus. And this is where uh, religion a religion popular at this time um, where young women um, basically did different uh, ritualistic activities and it basically shows females um, save for one boy in the painting interacting with different mythological figures in this particular fresco and these figures are basically lifestyle and in the background are pa panels that imitate marble which is the first style basically <clears throat> And the painter created the shallow ledge using paints, so it kind of looks like a ledge that they're all standing on. And it's shaded so well, it does actually look quite real. So this looks like an illusion of a ledge, and figures are interacting across the corners of the room. So she's actually looking over here. Um, you know, different figures are looking at each other and interacting across the, the corners of the room. And the semi-nude winged female at the far right lashed out, lashes out actually with her whip across the space of the room towards a kneeling woman with a bare back on the other wall, which happens to be initiate, an initiate or bride-to-be of the Roman god Dionysus, or uh, the god Dionysus. And this is a uniquely Roman design despite the presence of Greek mythological themes. So she actually, I believe she's holding a whip and she's gonna be whipping this, this girl here. So who's getting initiated to be the wife of Dionysus, the Greek wine god, or Bacchus, the Roman wine god. They have equivalent god in Rome, which his name is Bacchus. So here's a second style wall paintings. Some other examples. So 
these are two different rooms and these are a bit later and more mature than the last example we looked at and spatial illusionism uh, illusionism is used more extensively than just that ledge that was featured in that first slide um, roman painters created a three-dimensional setting that extend beyond the walls of the room and these were paintings from a bedroom or cubiculum cubiculum m from the house of the villa of publius Vanus Sinistor in Boscoriel, Italy, 500 to, or 50 to 40 BCE. <clears throat> and the one on the right is a detail of the Tholos from the same painting shown on the left. And the walls are opened up into these vistas of Italian, basically Italian um, towns. And painted doors and gates invite the viewer to walk the scene. And linear perspective is also used which is a relatively advanced technique used to show depth in a really realistic way on a two-dimensional space. And basically all the receding lines in the composition converge at a single point along the painting's central axis. And when this is done, distance is represented in a much more realistic way. And Greek painters first used linear perspective on their stage sets, and it was called scenographia, which means scene painting. Um, and this, the second style actually uses this illusionism of um, linear perspective and advanced painting, painting techniques uh, to transform the walls of houses into these picture windows that really expanded the illusion of space within the room. So maybe the room did lack windows, but they painted them in and made them look very realistic. And there's a lot of architectural features as well. So this is a gardenscape, uh, second style wall painting from the summer triclinium of the Villa of Livia, Prima Porta, Italy, 30 to 20 BCE. It's also a fresco. Um, Prima Porta, this is the ultimate example of the second style painting technique, and it's from the Villa of Livia in Prima Porta, Italy. It comes from the Villa of the Emperor Augustus's third wife, Livia, and all four walls are decorated with a lush gardenscape. And the only architectural element is the garden fence that runs around the whole area. And it suggests recession and distance. And the painter also used as atmospheric perspective. And this is a way of painting that creates the illusion of depth that is basically achieved through blurring the distance. So the further it gets away, the more blurry it gets. And um, Objects set, such as tree, trees and birds are clearly painted, while further away objects get blurrier and blurrier as they fade off into the distance. So that that that's um, basically atmospheric perspective, and it does create kind of an illusion of a real space. So the second style is always trying to open up the room to kind of a different space. Third style. Third style, you know, artists no longer attempted to replace the walls with 3D worlds of their own creation, nor did they try to imitate the appearance of marble. Instead, they painted the walls with delicate linear, linear fantasy sketched on predominantly monochromatic backgrounds, which monochromatic means basically one color. Um, so they're not trying to, you know, create any kind of illusion, really. They're, they're using, you know, mostly solid background colors with really seemingly dainty, small just designs. Um, and that's the third style. Um, and it dates from around 10 BCE. This is a piece from around 10 BCE, excuse me. And it's from the Villa of Agrippa Posthumus in Bosco, I can't say that, Bosco Trecasi, Italy. And it features these impossibly thin columns that support um, barely reminiscent canopies, um, insubstantial canopies that kind of resemble pediments on a temple maybe. And in the center, there's this delicate architectural frame, and inside of it is a tiny floating landscape. So frames are used quite a bit and often contain landscapes or mythological scenes, but this would never be mistaken as a window opening up into another world, like in the second style painting. Um, really quite the departure from the second style. And then the fourth style, fourth style is a taste for illusion illusionism that returned and it has taken, it's really been taken to the next level with the fourth style, though. It became popular in the 500 
or 50 CEs, um, and it is characterized by the reintroduction of architectural vistas seen through painted walls. And in this style, though, the vistas are really irrational and they're really fantastical, and the painters oftentimes created crowded and complex multicolor compositions in the four styles. So um, this is from the Ixion room, Triclinium P from the House of Vetti, Pompeii, Italy, 70 to 79 CE. And you can see when looking at this wall painting that the Ixion room in the House of Pompeii, or Vetti in Pompeii, is kind of a culmination of the all the previous mural schemes. Um, so it's kind of mixing all the styles together, it seems like. Um, the large white panels in the corner room have these delicate frames with the floating, you know, central motif, which is much like the third style. And but unmistakably, the fourth style is more fragmentary. Um, so you can see there's just like a lot of things going on here. Um, and a lot of times the different areas of the painting are unrelated. To one another and do not constitute a unified cityscape beyond the wall. So there's stuff going on, but none of it is very unified. There's not like a cityscape or anything going on. It's just kind of like a montage of different or a collage of different, um, you know, architectural details pretty much on this painting with different figures in certain um, frames basically. And it is believed that the mythological themes and painting techniques used in this wall painting reflect influence of the lost panel paintings of Greece. And it shows the continuing admiration the Romans had for Greek art. And they're not true copies, but are variations of standard compositions. And this is a, actually a wall mosaic that was found in the house of Neptune and, or, in the, sorry, in the house of Neptune and Amphrodite, Herculaneum, Italy, and it's from 62 to 79 CE, and it shows the sea god and his wife in these statuesque-like poses, and they're framed in these column forms, and it seems to be a dome that kind of resembles a seashell. So architectural elements are added to divide up, to divide up the space as well. So we got some columns here. Um, here's the fan-like dome, um, and this kind of resembles Greek statuary. So we'll take a look at these portraits. So mythological scenes were popular, um, and some houses also included scenes from history, such as like battles or um, even the brawl at the amphitheater that we looked at earlier. But portraits were another popular subject, and house owners would often have their portraits on their own walls in their house. And a lot of times they're holding writing implements to show that they were literate and elite and that they could read and write. And so you can see a man and his wife together here. The woman's holding a writing instrument instrument calling us called a stylus. And he's writing, he's actually holding a, a scroll. So that kind of shows that they can read and write and that they're from the elite class. And their heads are not the standard types, but are sensitive studies of the couple's individual faces. And they seem to be of equal standing. The woman is even overlapping the man a little bit, which kind of alludes to the fact that, um, you know, Roman women um, had a little bit higher status than possibly like a Greek woman would have. And then this is a seated, you know, here's another portrait with a woman and her stylus and her book. Um, and then here's a seated portrait of the Greek poet Meander. And he was basically kind of a famous Greek poet and it's found on the house of it's found in the house of the meander and he's holding an open scroll in his left hand that actually has his name on it and the historian thinks that this is an enlarged version of the kind of author portrait that was standard um, in ancient books so it's very comparable to the books we might see today um, when you look inside the front cover there's a picture of the you know the author with a little write-up about them and so it's kind of interesting to know that the ancients used this in their books and then that they actually added this onto a wall in Pompeii is kind of an extra step further. Um, so here's a still life painting. It's another genre that Roman painters explored and it's basically still lives are inanimate objects artfully arranged and this is a basically a detail from a four-style wall in the house of the stags in Heraclinium 
and it's one of the finest examples that's of still eyes out out there and you can see the shadows and highlights on the fruit and the